thank you, Mark, for your wonderful introduce for me. So, uh, first of all, I would like to thank the uh, uh, foundation, Melano, invite me to come here. Let me introduce uh, how about uh, the China happened for nutritional problems. So, everybody know the past 40 years, China happened a lot since our open policy. This is, I uh, assure you, these slides, uh, the past 40 years, the GDP increased a lot. This means it's the fast Chino society in, in China. So uh, I think uh, this year will be uh, 8,500 GDP per person. How about the big city? This is the whole country. So uh, our country is just like uh, European, uh, very big. So we can see the big city also rapidly for the, G for the GDP increased. Almost, uh, I, I think, is uh, 12,000 per uh, person. So much higher than the average. This is the highest is Shanghai. So for the transitional countries, uh, probably, particularly in my country, malnutrition is still there. But the big city, we can find a lot of the obese children and overweight. So in the, I think in the mountain area, we still find a lot of the standing. So, uh, the other issues, NCD, have some problem in children. So what, what and how to do in the traditional countries. Why can happen like this? We can say globalization has played a major role in the changes in the dietary patterns of the, and the lifestyle. Like a traditional low-fat diet, everybody knows Ch Ch Chinese people love to the carbohydrate a lot, used to be. But like now, the big city also changed to the uh, Western style, the fatty rich diet. It, it also can find a lot of the higher calorie intake, such as uh, sweet uh, leverage, something like that, so Coca-Cola or something like that. So energy intake imbalance. So Uh, today, I will show you some data from the China. So we divided into the four parts. The first one, I, I show you what's the happen in the premature infants in China. The second one is a close factory in children, including the prevalence and the hospitalization. The third one, I go over the prevalence of the overweight and obesity in children in China. So finally, I show you some problems, the food allergy, something like that. Fortunately, t today's and tomorrow, uh, yesterday, the professors did a lot of the information here. I think most of them similar happened like uh, in China. This is uh, global epidemiologic data from premature infants. So every year, almost uh, 15 million premature infants yearly from WHO reported. So China is top two, still top two. How much, how many? So based on our national survey for a working group for the neurologist, they said, reported from the 2005, 7.8% eight, from the neonatal, neonatal, uh, neonatal working group of the Chinese Society of the Pediatrics. So we count, counted it yearly around the 1 million to 1.2 million. This is uh, happened in 2005. Uh, uh, as you know, Three years ago, our, uh, our government uh, changed our policy. Previously, one family, one child. 
right now is two children, one family. So we change the policy. So recently, I, I listened to two years, we calculated maybe around the 1.2 to 1.4, which is means increased 20%. Uh, we, we can find this uh, pic, uh, slides. The premature infant is going up. What's the reason? Uh, uh, multiple births increasing. This is, uh, uh, I think, is the mainly cause. Uh, this study just published last year, I just show you when rapidly socio-economic transition trans city, which is uh, Guangzhou in China, the birth rate changes in the past uh, 15 years. What's uh, happened? The study tried to determine whether temporal changes in birth rate have happened uh, amongst uh, 2.3 million neonates born in Guangzhou. This is a large number. They tried to look at the SGA province and the LGA province. What's the result? So after the adjustment for the gestation length, uh, the decline in the birth weight was 0 0.37 gram year. So it's very, very slight, slightly decreased from the 2000, 2001 to 2015. The incidence, the, fortunately, the incidence of the both uh, SGA and LGA significantly decreased during the past uh, 15 years. This is uh, good news for us. What's the conclusion for this study? They said the mean birth weight decreased slightly in Guangzhou during the past 15 years. Uh, substantially improvement in the key fatal growth indica indicators in Guangzhou, which is means SGA and LGA. This is the, uh, the, the uh, premature infants. How about the hospitalized premature infants? The feet grows in weight gain. Uh, the bread bar means is estimated the total daily fetal weight gain. Unfortunately, in our hospital practice, we cannot reach like uh, the estimated. The, so we leak a lot. So that means we have a higher incidence of the EUGR. We did the study, my, my, my group did the study, of, uh, uh, maybe some doctors visited Shanghai before. We have, uh, in Shanghai, we have uh, four children's centers. We collected uh, uh, four children's centers data the past uh, two years. We, we found used the weight less than 10% at the discharge, almost 50% is EUGR, actual ulta close retarded. So uh, this is the data from the uh, uh, Shanghai, which, uh, which published uh, uh, eight years ago in clinical nutrition in Europe. This is data from the China, the whole China, including the uh, Lolo area. They have a uh, much higher EUGR incidence, which is uh, six, 60% around. How about the USA? We found they only 28. So that means uh, we not did good uh, clinical practice. Now we go to review for the fertile growth. This is the definition everybody know, the standing, and underweight, and the wasting. This is the, 
this is uh, this morning. The, the one doctor also show this slides. This show you the the low uh, middle and the low income countries. The different uh, criteria. They have different, uh, you know, the the uh, fettering groups, growth uh, fettering. So the much uh, big problems from the Southeast Asia and Africa. How about uh, in China? Uh, uh, I uh, in, uh, cited the UNICEF reported in nineteen in two thousand and nine. Nutrition status in children and mothers. Although China makes a great progress in reduce the prevalence of the malnutrition, still, still, 12.7 million children will suffer gross fertility under five years old. This is reported for 2009. Top two on the world, the, the total number of Chinese children grows fattening. Uh, we compare the the uh, the rural area and the urbans, the quite difference, almost five times, five times. The urban is 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 okay, but the rural area, particularly the mountain area, is big problems. We also divided the. Three groups. One is the uh, east coast, around the coast, the middle area, and the western area. You, you can see almost half. Uh, my group, uh, we also did the one study, go to the western, southwestern area, which is uh, uh, yearly income less than let me be uh, two thousand and three hundred, which is uh, national low income count. We 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 named it. So this is uh, one is Guangxi, the other is Yunnan. So we collected the seven hundred uh, students from the six school in the Guangxi, and. Uh, 860 students from the three school in the Yunnan. So it's a big number. This is my group did the uh, go to, oh, sorry. We try to check the food intake and the blood test, particularly for the, the hemoglobin. So we try to diagnose the uh, anemia and the calcium. Something like that. We can find the the male nutrition very high. It's uh, three point eight for the boy and the girl is five point three. So it, it's very high. So we can also you know underweight very high. Almost. Uh, 50. Anemia, 20%. 20%. So we divided the different age. We can find also different. Very high in this age is under the two years old. We also did the hospitalized the patients in Shanghai, three hospitals, totally two thousand and uh, two hundred. So we also can find, uh, you know, the standing, seven percent, and the underweight in the <coughs> five point five, and the wasting around the five. So this is the hospitalization in Shanghai from the three children's hospital data. You can see the infancy under them one years old very high, and uh, two to five is high. So under five totally is higher than the other age group. 
What's the reason? We calculated uh, maybe the GI problem is di such as diarrhea, uh, GRD, acute appendicitis, and uh, SPS, short bowel syndrome, and IBD. The other uh, po population from the surgery, trauma, the other issues like uh, the tumor, like a leukemia and a solid tumor, something like that. This is uh, different uh, system problems induced uh, malnutrition. <coughs> right now, we shift to the what's the problem in China for overweight and uh, the obese children. This is the global. You can see the chronic di disease going up in the different country, in the children. This is the US, we can find fatty liver, 3%. Uh, Italy, hypertension, around the 10 or 14%. And Iran, you can find the HDL and the TDG is the almost 30%, and 20 to 30%. Again, USA, the metabolic syndrome, 4.2. This is international reported. What's happened in Asia? See, uh, I found that a couple years ago, a lot of the famous media reported uh, the problems in Asia. I uh, cited some. This is a Lotus said epidemic obesity and diabetes street Asia. The New York Times, China affirmed being diabetes. And India, more wealthy and more diabetes. And uh, times, the whole Asia got fat. So a lot of the mediums focus on these problems. So I show you the data. So the prevalence in big city of China, I, uh, for example, the Beijing and the Shanghai. So six to eight years old in Beijing in 2004, the overweight, 12, 0.5% and obesity, 15%. School children from Shanghai survey in 2005, the so obesity, 12. Uh, compare the 2000, only 3.1. The so boys in the downtown, 15. And the girls in downtown, 9.2. So this is the reported the 10 years ago. 10 years ago. I show you the data the around the past 30 years, what's happened in Shanghai. 1980s, you know, the obesity only 2%. 90s, 10 years later, 8%. Right now, 11.5 going up rapidly. So how about the food allergy in the infants and the toddlers? So food allergy is more common in infants and the toddlers than in adults. So around the 6 to 0.8 for the children, the adults around the 3. The, the most uh, the problem, uh, the cow milk protein, proteins, so CMPS are one of the most common food allergy in infancy and early child. According to the CDC, the PDH food allergy increased from the 3.1 in 1998 to 5.1% in 2011. Common food allergy in infancy. So I think it's a corn meal, egg white, peanuts, and others. So a lot of the nutrition related also like this. This is a percentage. So, you know, East Asia people, a lot of the lactose is intolerance compared to, you know, the European 
population. So uh, right now we also found uh, some cases like this. So we prefer use the you know the yogo or something like that. This is the mechanism. What's the happen? So I, I list the so many uh, problems uh, happened in Chinese countries. So our uh, this is uh, in Chinese. I uh, I assure you, what's the mean? <laughs> this is our government in uh, the document. So this is from the you know uh, the Ministry of the Health. The document they tried to fight against for the obese and anemia. Yeah. List here, I show you. So it's time for action. It's a double burden in China now. So uh, I, I show you the, the local mountain area. Uh, I, uh, previously, I show you the, the data. Right now, our government uh, tried to cover uh, 32 million students. So we, uh, the government gave every mountain area students got four yuan renminbi per day for their nutritional supplemented, nutritional supplemented, the finance, uh, financial support from central government. They also got some support from the coast area. So like, like Shanghai, we always go to the mountain area for the help them. Uh, recently, we have uh, got the progress for this study in China, nutritional improve program for rural uh, commercial education students. We call this this programs. A students feed model have become the dominant catering model in this study, and uh, ninety five of the schools use the school feeding model. 55% of the schools uh, manufactured that the amount of the energy, protein, fat, and the two trace elements in the school meals met the national recommendation. That's uh, our uh, management improve program. You can see uh, covered almost, uh, almost uh, 2 million students this study who benefit from this uh, program found physical status of the students from improvement area has significantly improved so we i show you the data the data also shows malnutrition rate is going down from the 18.5 down uh, in two, uh, 2012 to 15.4% in 2016. So past four years, we got a very good result. How about the obesity? This is a program in Shanghai by the my uh, group. So we did the school-based intervention for the obesity, including, including the family and the community. So for the school-based uh, intervention, we teach the parents, just, we teach the students, we also teach uh, uh, educated the teachers, and also we tried to get the good environment like uh, just uh, give them water, no sweet, uh, loving, <coughs> something like that. So this is our program. So uh, past five years, we we not uh, so far we're still going on, but the, from the CDC in Shanghai tell us right right now the obesity prevalence is. Uh, keep it stable, sometimes a little bit going down. That's uh, happened in Shanghai. So uh, previously, I show you we have a big gap compared to the 
United States for the clinical practice in neonates. So how can improve that? As our experience, tried to in the hospital set the nutrition support team. So that's our, uh, our group did the uh, nationally uh, training the medical faculty and the staff and uh, help them set the nutrition support team and uh, in charge of the whole uh, children's hospitals patients, how did the nutritional screening or nutritional evaluation. After that, if you find some problems, you can get them uh, clinical nutrition support. This is a different uh, area. Uh, past uh, eight years, we got the uh, very good positive result. Uh, this is the uh, China map. You can, uh, I, you can find the red spot. That means they are set, the children's hospital set the nutrition support team. So around the almost, in Shanghai, we have four, Beijing one, and, uh, and uh, Nanjing, and uh, Jiangsu, and uh, Hangzhou, almost, almost the big the cities, the children's hospital, they set the uh, nutrition support team, as NST. So this is good news. So what's the next? So I, I think uh, still key challenges in China for the nutrition uh, problems. We still need educated more medical staff in whole country. Right now, you can see the big city is okay. How about the, the middle area and the mountain area? So we need a lot. We try to make more NST in the hospitals. Fortunately, so far, we connected or linked uh, almost uh, 30 children's hospital. We tried to make, uh, make, make them set up a nutrition support team. And also make a suitable policy or regulation in China. Uh, previously, we know registered dietitian system. Fortunately, two years ago, we s uh, our nutritional society Chinese Nutritional Society set this problem, these this, 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 this systems. So, so last year, almost, almost 2,000 new uh, dietitians passed the examination. 2,000 a year passed the registered dietitian examination. So right now, every year, we should do that. So should do qualified dietitians help us do a lot of uh, nutritional work in the hospital or help us educate the, to the community, something like that. So we also need to do a lot of uh, do high quality research and the joint intervention academic uh, activity, just like me come here. So join the international academic activity more contribution in the international level, like uh, organize the international meetings, peer review international journal uh, editorial board, and uh, publish the more scientific groups, the papers. So we need to do a lot of research. Uh, la last uh, seven years for the East uh, in ch from China, every year they have uh, oral presentation uh, uh, over, the, over 10 papers will be posted. So oral presentation from the three to six oral presentation, post over 10 papers. So this is the China. Okay, so I, uh, well we did uh, some uh, research and uh, the outcome. So we, I, I would thank my faculty from the Department of the Clinical Nutrition and the faculty from the Department of the Clinical Nutrition and uh, 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 the hospital. 
and the faculty for uh, division and the uh, pediatric GI and uh, nutrition. Dr. Wang here, she is a pediatric gastrologist. And uh, faculty from the Shanghai Key Lab for the pediatric GI and nutrition. And the faculty from the Department of Nutrition School of Medicine and Shanghai Jiaotong University. This is uh, my group. Thank, thank you for your attention. Uh, this is uh, my hometown. Uh, it's a very famous uh, river. It's the Wampu River. This is uh, the, you know, the east side. This is a new area, which is uh, all, all of the building happened in re recent 30 years. This is the uh, Pudong. We, we mean the Pudong. How about uh, the west? This is traditional. <laughs> the, a lot of the European style, which is uh, built the 100 years ago. So warmly everybody to visit us in Shanghai. China always welcome all of you. Thank you.